astronomers have unveiled a remarkable pre-covery. Archival data from NASA's TESS, Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, captured the interstellar object 3I Atlas as early as 7 the May 2025, nearly two months before its formal discovery in early July. Even at that time, the object was already clearly active, offering scientists an unprecedented early glimpse at a visitor from beyond our solar system. Pause for a few seconds and support me with a subscribe. Test primarily designed to detect exoplanets by monitoring stellar brightness fluctuations, isn't optimized for detecting faint, fast-moving objects like interstellar comets. Yet researchers Adina Feinstein, Daryl Seligman, and John Noonan harnessed a clever technique known as shift stacking to pinpoint 3i Atlas in a crowded sky. By predicting its location in each snapshot and aligning those frames before stacking them, the team amplified the faint signal of the object, otherwise undetectable in individual images. During the observational window through early June, 3i Atlas significantly brightened by a factor of approximately 5x, while its distance from the sun decreased from around 635 AU to 547 AU. Notably, the brightness surge cannot be fully attributed to proximity alone, which should account for only a 1.5x increase. Instead, Researchers suggest that the object underwent vigorous outgassing of hypervolatile compounds, such as carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, materials that typically sublimate at greater distances than water ice and are more common in interstellar materials. Attempts to determine the rotational period of 3I Atlas proved inconclusive, primarily because a surrounding coma likely obscured any surface features, masking periodic brightness changes. This pre-covery not only enriches the history of 3i Atlas, but also showcases how revisiting archival data can yield hidden discoveries. As astronomers continue to mine existing datasets from telescopes like TESS, Vera Rubin, and others, more insights into interstellar visitors, both past and future, may emerge. Comet 3i Atlas escaped from the thick disk of the Milky Way. In August 2025, NASA's SphereX Space Observatory conducted a series of observations of the interstellar object 3I Atlas. At that moment, the interstellar comet was more than 3 AU from the Sun and was moving at a speed of 58 tot kilowatts along a hyperbolic trajectory with an eccentricity of 6.2. The new data brought unexpected results, challenging scientists' previous ideas about the origin of this alien. Spectral analysis revealed the presence of a symmetrical cloud of carbon dioxide, CO2, around the object. The rate of mass loss is estimated at approximately 70 kg/cc. However, another fact is much more important. No water in a gaseous state was found. This contradicts earlier hypotheses, according to which 3I Atlas was considered a water-rich comet. Scientists note that the absence of a bright coma of water gas is puzzling since the object was not far from the so-called water ice line, where temperatures were low enough to cause CO2 condensation, but not water. Probably, the comet could have been exposed to intense high doses of radiation, which led to the evaporation of water relative to CO2, or it could have preserved internal structures that prevented heat penetration, thereby limiting water sublimation. Using Monte Carlo simulations and the Galpot Galactic Potential Model, Researchers traced the object's trajectory back a billion years, determining its average age to be 4.6 billion years, and its origin to be in the thick disk region of the Milky Way. The high approach speed and hyperbolic orbit indicate that the object was ejected due to gravitational interactions, probably with a giant planet, which gave it enough momentum to escape beyond its home star system. One of the most surprising findings was that, according to radiation data at a wavelength of 1 mm, the diameter of the 3I Atlas core can reach 46 kiloiter. This makes it millions of times more massive than the first known interstellar traveler, Comet 2I Borisov. This anomaly, along with the fact that the object's trajectory is aligned with the plane of the solar system, has raised a number of questions. Could this object be something other than an ordinary comet? 
Some scientists do not rule out even the most daring hypotheses, such as that it has an artificial, extraterrestrial origin. The scientific community is now eagerly awaiting the publication of data from another powerful instrument, the James Webb Space Telescope, which also observed 3i Atlas. Its unique capabilities may shed light on what is actually hidden beneath the outer layer of this silent interstellar visitor. The final conclusions remain beyond the scope of the data obtained, leaving room for scientific debate and the most daring assumptions. Take a moment and give us a like for this video. Thank you so much. A new paper on spectroscopic data from the Very Large Telescope reported the surprising detection of nickel without iron in the plume of gas around 3I Atlas. Nickel without iron is a signature of industrial production of nickel alloys. This data constitutes a new anomaly of 3I Atlas. Natural comets generically show iron and nickel simultaneously as both elements are produced together in the ejecta of supernova explosions. Is this anomaly another clue for a possible technological origin of 3I Atlas? The paper suggests chemical formation through the nickel-carbonyl channel, which is an extremely rare and exotic possibility in comets, whereas it is a standard technology for industrial nickel refining. The inferred mass loss rate of nickel for 3I Atlas is about 5 grams per second, at a heliocentric distance of 2.8 times the Earth-Sun separation, AU. It exhibits a dramatic rise with decreasing distance from the Sun, with a power law index of 8.43. The spectroscopic data on the plume surrounding 3I Atlas also reveals cyanide, CN, with a mass loss rate of about 20 grams per second at 2.85 AU and an even steeper dependence on heliocentric distance to the power of 9.38. These results add to the chemical anomalies implied by the SphereX Space Observatory and Webb Space Telescope, which revealed that the gas plume around 3I to Atlas is dominated by mass with 95% of CO2 and only 5% of H2O, very different from an expected water-rich comet. The idea that the nucleus is much smaller than the 46-kilometer diameter inferred from the 1 micron data collected by SphereX, requires a dense coma of dust to reflect nearly all the sunlight from 3I Atlas. In that case, the dust would have been pushed by solar radiation pressure to trail the nucleus, constituting a prominent cometary tail. However, no cometary tail was observed around 3I Atlas in the Hubble Space Telescope image, which extended backward as much as it extended sideways perpendicular to the direction of the sun. If, on the other hand, most of the sunlight is reflected by the surface of the nucleus, then 3I Atlas is a million times more massive than the previous interstellar object 2II Borisov. We should have detected a million objects of the scale of 2I Borisov before detecting a 46-kilometer nucleus if 3I Atlas was a rock on a random trajectory. The fine-tuned alignment of the trajectory of 3I Atlas with the ecliptic plane of the planets suggests that it may have targeted the inner solar system by technological design, as I suggested in a paper written a few days after 3I Atlas was discovered. I am writing this report from Copenhagen, where I was invited to give a lecture at a conference titled Current Themes in Astrophysics and Particle Physics 2025, and attended by Nobel laureate David Gross and other leading physicists and astrophysicists. Copenhagen is well known to physicists as the birthplace of the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. When I entered Auditorium A at the Niels Bohr Institute, the room looked familiar. I remembered a photograph of this auditorium from 1930, which showed at the front row, Niels Bohr, Werner Heisenberg, Wolfgang Pauli, and Lev Landau, who pioneered quantum mechanics. Niels Bohr debated Albert Einstein about the proper interpretation of quantum mechanics and his view on indeterminism, the irreversibility of quantum measurements, and complementarity, that objects have certain pairs of complementary properties which cannot all be observed or measured simultaneously, prevailed to form the modern understanding of physics. As soon as I chose a seat at the center of the wooden bench, I was informed that I just sat where Wolfgang Pauli sat 95 years ago. But all that I could think about at that moment is how uncomfortable the seating bench is, 
and how much worse the quality of life must have been for these luminaries a century ago. Nevertheless, I would have happily traded being in the same room ninety-five years ago, when the excitement of discovery was routine, and deviations from traditional thinking was celebrated, rather than being ridiculed on social media. My lecture was split into two parts, black holes and interstellar objects. The second part was added at the last minute based on a request from members of the audience during the coffee break. In the spirit of the 1930 photograph marking path-breaking discussions, I enjoyed the lively exchange on 3i Atlas. In the Q&A segment that followed my lecture, excited members of the audience that filled the room with some standing in the back asked numerous questions about 3i Atlas. David Gross was interested about messaging 3i Atlas, why it sheds CO2 if it is technological, and whether there is any evidence for a non-gravitational acceleration. The conference organizers, Emil Bohr, and Johann Samzing noted, What a wonderful and refreshing talk. For a rare moment in my 45-year career in physics, I had felt a sense of genuine curiosity and the spirit of an authentic discussion of all possibilities. This was the spirit that brought me to physics in the first place. Auditorium A delivered what I expected from it. The stiff wooden bench on which we all sat did its job. It is a metaphor for the stubborn facts that revolutionized our perception of the physical world when quantum mechanics was discovered, and that would revolutionize our mental world when we encounter alien technology. On October 3, 2025, 3i Atlas will pass within 29 million kilometers from Mars, and the high-rise camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, which will be able to image it with a 30 kilometer per pixel resolution. Such an image could separate the contributions of the nucleus and coma to the reflected sunlight and constrain with greater confidence the size of the nucleus. David Gross suggested that we should also observe 3i Atlas with radio telescopes for any technological radio transmission coming from it. I agree. This encounter is a blind date of interstellar proportions, and on any blind date my best advice is observe the other side. We had already revealed our existence by broadcasting radio signals for over a century. This act might have triggered the visit. If 3i Atlas had originated from the inner edge of the Oort cloud, at about 1,000 times the Earth-Sun separation, it would have started its journey 80 years ago when radio transmissions became routine on Earth. The first nuclear explosion took place on July 16, 1945, exactly 80 years ago. On the one hand, I would be pleased if 3i Atlas turned out to be a CO2-rich comet, implying that humanity is not at risk from alien technology. But on the other hand, humanity desperately needs a wake-up call to avoid self-destruction. During the coffee break, the brilliant Alex Lupsaska told me about his recent mathematical discovery of three new symmetries in black hole spacetimes. After laboring to discover them, Alex asked ChatGPT to find these symmetries and was shocked to find out that the latest version of this artificial intelligence system managed to accomplish the same task swiftly. He later verified with OpenAI that the AI system did not have access to his paper as it was trained on older data. Perhaps superhuman intelligence is already among us. Of course, alien AI might supersede our own digital creations. If any future interstellar object will end up as technological technology, ranking 10 on the Loeb scale. We should be filled with gratitude for the universe, endowing us once again with a much-needed sense of cosmic modesty.